Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Boyagi and I lead the Agile and DevOps evangelism team at Atlassian. And today I'm going to share with you a few tips on how to break through the complexity limit using platform engineering. All right, let's start with the ultimate goal for software teams. Deliver high quality software fast. Talk to your CIO or CTO, look at their vision statement. Chances are they're chasing some version of this goal. And whilst it's a very common goal to have, there's a massive diversity in organizations who manage to achieve that and those who don't. So what's driving this diversity in performance? Some companies are able to drop new code into prod with mind-boggling frequency. Other companies are struggling just to get quarterly releases out the door. The same technology and resources are available to all companies. So what's driving this massive variation in performance? This is Steve. Steve is not the reason why there's a massive diversity in performance. I thought I'd use Steve as a case study to show you why there is a big difference in teams who are able to drop high quality code into production with very frequently and those who don't. Steve was my first hire in what would eventually become a 60 person team. We worked together for about eight years and we became really good friends uh, during that time. So with his permission, he couldn't be here today, but with his permission, I'm going to share some of his story with you. How many of you guys are developers? Keep your hand up if you've been a developer for more than one year, more than three years, more than five years, more than eight years, more than 10? Awesome, we've got some veterans. So this story is going to, become, is going to sound really familiar to you guys. All right, so when Steve and I first started working together, he had a really simple goal. Ship high quality software to production. He got quite a lot of joy out of doing that. Now to ship high quality software to prod, Steve needed to know how to code, obviously. Of course he did other things too, but primarily a lot of his time was spent coding. Coding and shipping software, this made Steve happy, as you can see in the photo. A little while after we started working together, the shift left movement started. This is the point where I'd normally play dramatic music. Our organization thought it would be a good idea if our developers started to do the testing as well as developing the software. So now Steve became responsible for writing the software and testing it. As we matured as an industry, we started adopting more and more tools that were designed to help Steve do his job. While we worked together, Steve was using around 20 different tools that covered CICD, monitoring, security, and so on. So on a daily basis, he'd be traversing around 20 different tools to do his job. And like many organizations, ours recognize that uh, security doesn't, isn't, uh, good security doesn't come from an external team, good security starts at the source. So we asked the devs to start to take on some security responsibilities. We shifted security left, and we asked our devs to start taking on tasks like patching, which were previously done by operations teams. We implemented some secure code practices. So now Steve was also across uh, security practices. Then something awesome happened. We started adopting cloud technology. So what does this mean for Steve? We sent Steve off to get AWS certified, and Steve now had to understand how to leverage cloud technology. Of course, along came a shift to DevOps. So Steve became responsible to develop and run his software. Now, when you take a step back, uh, quite a lot changed in the, in the years that Steve and I worked together. And a lot of you are devs, so you know there's a lot that developers need to know and do as a part of their goal to ship software to production. But all of this so far has been on the development side of things. There's some additional complexity that comes along based on the organization that you work in. So in our organization that we worked in, it was a really large organization. Steve needed to work with about 20 different teams in order to do his job. He needed to navigate many, many, many processes outside of simply writing and shipping code. He has to navigate governance processes. 
Now, I say navigate because these processes seem to change every single time Steve was trying to go through them. I was Steve's leader, so I used to get a lot of complaints about the governance processes, about changing requirements. So as Steve was working through these things, he was continuously discovering what he had to do. And of course, in every company, you get different types of asks that come along outside of just doing your job. Things like attending meetings, presenting at forums, mandatory training. I think for Steve, when we worked together, the number one distraction for him were other teams engaging him, asking him questions about the software that he was writing. How do you use it? Where's the documentation? How to leverage it, etc. Now, as we grew our team, Steve became more and more senior, and he became like a guardian of our culture. I really trusted Steve to help us make sure that we're hiring the right people to join our team. So I asked Steve to start uh, interviewing new team members. Now, what happens after you interview a team member? Once those people started, who better to make sure they have a great onboarding experience than Steve? So when you list out all the things that Steve had to know and do, you can see that what used to be a simple goal of writing code and shipping software to prod is no longer so simple. Needing to know and remember how to do all of these things adds, adds significant cognitive load for developers. The complexity associated with shipping software to prod is coming from two different places. One is intrinsic complexity. Now, that's the complexity associated with being a developer in the modern day software world. The other side is organizational complexity. Now, organizational complexity is the type of complexity that comes from the organization that you work in. It's things like the, it's driven by things like the size of the engineering team, the industry that you work in, all the processes that your company choose, chooses to navigate. Now, what I've seen is a lot of developer experience teams look to tackle one type of complexity. They look to tackle either intrinsic complexity for the developer, or they look to tackle organizational complexity. But the real path to success to enabling high-performing software teams is to tackle both. The reason is there's a limit to how much complexity one team can navigate. Once a team reaches their complexity limit, their effectiveness, their, their engagement, their satisfaction, and the quality of their work rapidly drops. A good indicator that a team has reached their complexity limit is they start spending more time navigating complexity than actually shipping software to production. Now, I shared a story about Steve, who I worked with in another organization. But within Atlassian, we found that our developers were also reaching their complexity limit during our journey to adopt a microservices architecture. Now, in both the case of Steve that I used to work with and within Atlassian, we managed to lift that complexity limit using platform engineering. This basically means that we broke that relationship between complexity and having effective software teams. So I'm going to share with you now three tips on how you can do the same thing using a developer experience platform. All right, tip number one, reduce the need to remember things. A huge driver for cognitive load for developers is the need to remember things. For developers, a big part of this is uh, remembering where to find information. Developers, as you know, spend a lot of time looking for things. So at Atlassian, we use our uh, software component catalog, which is in one of our products called Compass, to store everything we need to know about the software that a team owns. In the component catalog, you can see which team owns a particular service and the chat channel that you can use to get in touch with them. You can see who's, in call, who's on call in case there's an incident and you need to contact somebody. You can find a link to the source code repository, the JIRA project that the team uses to track their work, all the documentation associated with that software component. You can see up and downstream dependencies for that software component. And of course, if you click through, you find all of that same information for, those, for that so piece of software that you're looking at. At Atlassian, we don't, we don't need to remember a whole bunch of things or bookmark thousands of URLs. We have one URL in our company where everyone can navigate and find the information that they're looking for. So having all that information in one place starts to enable self-service. 
which means Steve gets less requests for information from other teams. Everything is in one spot and everyone knows where to find it. Information on demand also means that Steve needs to interact with less teams because they're able to get what they need without actually contacting Steve. Onboarding new team members becomes a lot easier. Instead of manually sending links to all the different information that a new starter needs to know about and showing them how to dissect all that information into something that's going to make sense, they are given a link, they can see all the software components that that team owns, they can see the documentation, how to find the source code, all the dependencies, they find all of that stuff at one link. So this improves the onboarding experience and starts to free up Steve's time. All right, second tip, make it easy to understand and meet company standards and expectations. So scorecards are a great mechanism to communicate standards at scale. Not only do teams know upfront what they need to know, but during their delivery cycle, they're able to see how they're going at meeting the company's expectations. The scorecards are automatic and dynamic, which means there are no surprises. So at Atlassian, we use scorecards in Compass to track service readiness and, team and software health. So every team has this in their dashboard and they're able to see every day how they're tracking against expectations. So scorecards for Steve means he no longer needs to remember governance processes. He doesn't need to go looking for standards and expectations. They're all there baked right in the place where he works every day. The governance on demand culture also means that Steve rarely needs to attend governance meetings. Who likes meetings? No hands. Oh, shocked. So for Steve, it means he doesn't need to navigate, or he doesn't need to attend those type of meetings anymore. Uh, with those meetings are usually some heavy processes, so Steve doesn't need to navigate those processes either. So as you can see, we've already started to reduce, or significantly reduce, the organizational complexity for Steve. Let's take a look at the intrinsic complexity. So tip number three is to make the right way the easy way. Now this is a really important, important point. A lot of companies try to make it really hard for devs to do the wrong thing. That's really different or very different from making it easy to do the right thing. Your developer experience platform is a perfect place to do that. Instead of Steve needing to work out CloudFormation, App Runner, Event Bridge, including all the settings that comply with the company's standards and policies, we can use templates in Compass to automatically uh, provision that infrastructure for Steve. So this uh, event, uh, sorry, templates also automatically provisions the CI/CD infrastructure and everything that uh, the pipelines and everything that Steve needs to start dropping code into production. So this means that we start to reduce the toil uh, and what Steve needs to remember in order to ship software to production. Using templates in, in Compass means pipelines are automatically configured according to the company standards. So this means that um, Steve spends less time setting up the tools that he needs to use. Having templates set up cloud infrastructure and tooling according to company standards also reduces the amount of time Steve needs to spend on security tasks. Now this doesn't completely get rid of security from Steve's role, there's still patching and some other things that he has to do, but the low value tasks associated with just complying with the basics that any company expects you to do are automated. So all the toil starts to um, go away in terms of security practices. There are so many more ways that using a developer experience platform can reduce complexity and cognitive load for developers. I've just shown you three basic use cases that are really easy to set up and get going. Um, and now you can see Steve's happy face again and his goal starts to become a little more clear. All right, some quick takeaways from this session. There are two types of complexity that developers need to deal with. Those that are intrinsic to software development and what's, what you just need to do as part of being a modern day software developer and those that are spe specific to your organization. Platform engineering helps abstract, or should help to abstract, both types of complexity. Only focusing on one or the other is a failure mode. At Atlassian, we use 
compass to reduce uh, the need to remember things using our software catalog. We make meeting expectations easy using scorecards and metrics, and we make the right way the easy way using software templates. I'll be at booth 1397, it's right behind uh, this stage. I'd love to continue the conversation with you there. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>